Welcome to Exponents and Integers. This video is for grade 7, 8, and 9. Okay, so the first thing we look at is how to expand uh, an exponent. 5 to the power of 4 means that you need to multiply 5 by itself 4 times. Okay, and we can see it there 5 multiplied by itself uh, 4 times. All right, just 1. 2, 3, 4. And of course, 5 to the power of 12, when you expand it, it means that you would multiply 5 by itself 12 times. Alright, let's move on to squares. A square is just a number multiplied by itself twice, okay? So 1 squared is 1 times 1, which gives you 1. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which gives you 4. 3 squared is uh, 3 times 3, which gives you 9. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which gives you 16, and so forth. And you're expected to know uh, your squares up until 12, okay? So 12 squared is 12 times 12 at the end, which gives you um, 144, okay? And, of course, the inverse of a square is a square root, okay? That's the inverse square and... The square root are inverses, okay? Uh, so let me explain what that means. If 2 squared gives you 4, then the square root of 4 is 2. So you're just going back. That's why we say the inverses. And if 5 squared gives you 25, so then that means the square root of 25 is 5, okay? And we could do that right at the end. Uh, right till the end, if 12 squared is 144, then that means the square root of 144 will be 12 because um, squares and square roots are inverses. Cubes, uh, of course, cube is a number multiplied by itself three times, okay? So the cube of 1 is 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Uh, the cube of 2 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. The cube of 3 is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And you have to know the first six uh, cubes. And of course, just like squares and square roots, cubes and cube roots are also inverses. Okay. What that means is, if 2 squared will give you an answer of 8, and then the cube root of 8 is 2. If 5 cubed will give you 125, then uh, the cube root of 125 will be 5. And so it goes. Another important uh, fact you need to know about cube roots. Unlike square roots, uh, the cube roots can be negative. Okay, so let me explain what I mean by that. If you take a square root of any negative number, the calculator will give you an error, which means you cannot take a square root of a negative number. Uh, but if you take a cube root now, all right, if you take a cube root of a negative number, uh, let's go shift and then the cube root will be there. Let's take the cube root of... 1,000, you get negative 10. So the cube root of a negative number exists, but the square root of a negative number does not exist. That's very important to remember. So, of course, uh, the cube root of negative 1 would be 1. Uh, the cube root of negative 64, just like the cube root of 64 was 4. So now the cube root of negative 64 will be negative 4. All right. Let's go on now to rules. Okay, these rules are only for grade 8 and 9. So grade 7s are not expected to learn these rules. All right, grade 8s and 9s, this is what you're supposed to um, know uh, as part of your exponential rules. If you're multiplying exponents with the same base, for example, these exponents, they both have 2 as a base. The rule is, if you are multiplying, you may add those exponents, okay? So, you add the 2 and the 5, and it gives you 7, okay? Again, if you are dividing 
exponents with the same base. As you can see, these exponents have the base of 2. Now for division, you do the inverse you know, of multiplication. You minus. So you'll take the 7 and you minus the 5 and you get 2. Okay, and then we also have the power rule. The power rule uh, tells you that if you have exponents inside the brackets and an exponent outside the bracket, the exponent inside the bracket should be multiplied with the exponent outside the bracket. So the 5 here must be multiplied by 3, okay? So then you get 15. And then we've got the power of product rule, which means if you've got uh, a product of two numbers inside the brackets, both those numbers uh, should be factored or multiplied. Their exponents uh, should both be multiplied by the exponent outside the bracket. So the 2 would be, the 1 would be multiplied by 3, so 2 to the 3, and that 1 would also be multiplied. So both numbers basically need to be multiplied by the exponent outside, okay? Of course, for division, it would work out the same way. Uh, the numbers that are divided, the, ex the exponent outside the bracket must be factored into both numbers that are divided. And the last one, uh, the last rule is if you take any number to the power of 0, you'll get 1. And any number, this could be any number. If you take a number to the power of 0, we can try any number. Okay, any number. If we put that number to the power of 0, it will give us 1. So that's uh, another important rule you need to know. Um, okay, the last two rules are not important for you. We will learn those when we get to grade 10. All right, let's move on. All right, of course, we know that integers uh, are whole numbers that can also be positive, all right? Uh, whole numbers can only be positive, but integers can be positive and negative whole numbers, okay? What are the rules for integers? All right, okay, we've got, uh, before we get to the rules, properties. Okay, properties, we've got the commutative property, or we've got the associative property, and these are very easy to explain. Commutative property works only for addition and multiplication, and what it basically says is the order in which uh, the numbers are placed does not matter. So let's look at an example. 3 plus 2 will give you 5. But 2 plus 3 will also give you 5. So the order of the 3 and the 2 for two numbers does not matter. For multiplication, it's the same. 3 times 2 will give you 6. And 2 times 3 will also give you 6. So it doesn't matter if you start with 2 or 3, you'll get 6. So but this uh, commutative rule only applies to addition and multiplication. It does not work for subtraction and division. Let me just show you. Uh, if we take 3 and we subtract 2, we get 1. But if we take 1 and we subtract 3, we get negative 2. So as you can see, the commutative property does not work here. You cannot uh, put the number in any order. The order matters for. Uh, so the commutative property does not work for subtraction. It also does not work for division. Let's look at this with an example. 6 divided by 2 is 3, but 2 divided by 6 is not equal to 3. So again, the commutative property does not work for uh, division. So it would only work for addition and multiplication. The associative property is uh, basically the same as the commutative property, but the commutative property was for two numbers. But the associative property can be used for three or more numbers. But it's basically the same rules, which says if you're adding, the order of in which you add doesn't matter. 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 1 is 10. But 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus, sorry, plus 2 plus 4 is still 10. So the order doesn't matter. And of course, for multiplication, the order of three or more numbers doesn't matter. Uh, so the main difference between commutative and associative is that commutative uh, is the order of two numbers, 
but associative, you're looking at the order of three numbers. Both the commutative and associative properties will only work for addition and subtraction and not for subtraction and division. All right, then we move on. Okay, now we come to the rules of integers. What are the rules of integers? Okay, let's start with addition and subtraction rule. Let's look at the box on the right. What are the addition and subtraction rules? The addition and subtraction rules are as follows. If signs are the same, keep the sign and add. All right, so if you look at negative 2 and negative 5, they're the same sign. 2 is negative and 5 is also negative. So what's the rule? If signs are the same, keep the negative sign and add. Okay, so you keep the negative and you add 2 plus 5. And of course, both these signs are positive, so you get positive 10. All right, so what do you do then if your signs are different? The rule is if the signs are different, then you will take the sign of the bigger number and subtract. Okay, so we've got uh, negative 2 and positive 5. Uh, these numbers have different signs. Let's look at the bigger number. The bigger number is 5. So you take the sign of 5 and subtract. Okay, that's the rule. So you add if signs are the same. You subtract if signs are different. So 5 minus uh, 2 is 3. And of course, in this example, we've done the same. Signs are different. This was positive and that one's negative. Remember, if the sign is not written uh, in front of the number, then that means that that number is positive. So we've got a positive and a negative. Signs are different. So we must subtract but before we subtract let's choose the sign of the bigger number 70 is bigger than 50 so we choose the negative from 70 and then we subtract okay so let me repeat those rules if signs are the same keep that sign and add but if signs are different take the sign of the bigger number and subtract all right so let's look at the examples uh, to your left again we've got a positive number with a negative number uh, positive integer and a negative integer signs are different so what's the rule we're going to subtract but before we subtract we take the sign of a bigger number so 34 is bigger than 23 so we're going to take the negative 34 minus 23 will give you 11. okay what if signs are the same then that rule applies if signs are the same we add, but we keep the sign, and then we add. 2 plus 4 is 6. All right. Here we are given three integers. And of course, let's start by simplifying the first two. One is positive, and the other is negative. Signs are different. Take the sign of a bigger number and subtract. 12 minus 3 is 9. Again, to simplify the last two ter uh, integers, we've got different signs again. So we look which one is bigger, 30 is bigger, take the sign of a bigger number and subtract. 30 minus 9 is 21. Okay, then finally uh, we come to multiplication and division of integers. This part is also not for grade uh, 7, so this is only for grade 8 and 9. Dividing integers. What are the rules that grade 8 and 9s uh, should know when it comes to multiplication and divi division of integers. If you are multiplying or dividing the same sign, you get a positive answer. Okay, if the signs are the same, you're always going to get a positive. So you've got a negative and a negative, they'll give you a positive. Positive and a positive will give you, uh, so a negative times, um, a negative gives you a positive. Positive times, Positive gives you a positive. So if signs are the same, so what the rule says, if signs are the same, you'll get a positive answer. But if signs are different, in other words, if you've got a negative times uh, a positive, now signs are different, your answer will be negative. Signs are the same, your answer will be positive. Okay, so signs are the same here. So negative times negative gives you a positive. 2 times 5 gives you 10. Again, okay, a negative outside the bracket multiplied by the negative inside the bracket will give you a positive because the same sign gives you a positive when you multiply five okay
All right, and uh, the next part again. Now the signs are different. If the, if the signs are different, your answer will be negative, and two times five is ten. Okay, let's uh, go to the examples uh, to your left. Uh, all right, so we've got a positive and a negative. Six is positive, three is negative. Okay, what are the integer rules for multiplication and division? If the signs are different, your answer will be negative. And 6 divided by 3 would be, excuse me, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So, of course, if you multiply the negative outside with the positive 2, we get a negative. Because there are different signs outside and inside the bracket. But now, if we have the same sign outside and inside the bracket, we get a positive. Uh, answer because if you multiply the same sign, you get a positive. And of course, remember, um, grade eights and nines brackets do uh, tell you to multiply. Okay. All right. Now to simplify this uh, further, we're multiplying a negative and a positive. Different signs will give you a negative, and two times four will give you eight. Okay. All right. Inside and outside the bracket, we've got. Uh, the same sign, so we're going to get a positive answer, positive 12. Uh, outside the bracket, we've got a positive, and inside is a negative. Different will give us a negative 4. Finally, we've got different signs again, okay? So what's the rule? If the signs are different and you're dividing, the answer will be negative. 12 divided by 4 uh, will give you 3. Of course, uh, you become better at integers with more practice, okay? Uh, this is the end of uh, exponents and integers. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already.